Hey guys, in the fast lane here. In this video, I'm going to show you how to install a wide band. Okay, so if you guys are just starting out, this right here is a gauge pod pillar. Now, I had already had it installed. I took it down so I can uh, run this wide band. Now, there's three pillars. Some of them come with two, some of them come with one. I got my boost, oil pressure, and then I'm going to use my wide band up top here. So pretty much what you want to do is you got the wide band here and it connects. You're going to unplug the gauge and kind of set that aside because we don't need that right now. And we have to run this through the firewall and down behind the dash right here so we can run it to the uh, exhaust. Now first thing I want to point out is you're going to have to drill a hole in your exhaust pipe and put a bung in there. Uh, some exhaust pipes have... Uh, oxygen sensors in them if you're just running it from a factory pipe but I had a three inch pipe so if you want to do that you get what they call spark plug fowlers they're little uh, spark plugs the spark plug will go into it but you cut that part off where the spark plug uh, after the spark plug and then you weld it to your exhaust pipe and then you got yourself a bung you can get them at Advance or AutoZone so that's how you do that so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to run this through the firewall here. We're going to start from outside in. And uh, I'm going to run it up through. There's a hole on the outside, and then I'm going to come up through here. All right, so on the 96 to 2000 Honda Civics, this is where you're going to want to run it, uh, right here behind the uh, clutch reservoir. You can see right here i got my boost, oil pressure, and my EGT gauge which is right here. I'm about to take that out. I don't want that no more. That's what the uh, wide band's replacing. So go ahead and run it right down in there and then you'll come up to the come up to the side of the firewall and then you'll be pretty much uh, ready to install your gauge. As for the wide band end right here, uh, let's have a look. Let me see. Do I got a flashlight? Yeah, I do. Hold on. Okay, so flashlight, we're going to go under the vehicle, <clears throat> and I have mine, you can see right here, I have my uh, just regular uh, oxygen sensor in there, just to plug it up for now. Now this bongo I was telling you about right here, this piece, that is just off of a spark plug, uh, the, the spark plug fowlers they call them, it's like an anti-foul. You can put it over the spark plug and then screw it into your spark plug holder. It won't allow it to foul. Um, but uh, you cut the end of that off, weld it to it, and then you got the threads that you need to screw in your wide band or oxygen sensor. All right, I found a, another spot that's a little bit easier. Um, let's get under here. Right there. You can see it right there. I don't want to shine the light on it because it kind of blurs it out. But right there, you just pop that grommet out. And I'll probably drill a hole in the grommet then slide it through and then pop it back in so it seals up instead of having RTV it. So it's just right up there. Um, the other lines are actually in a different spot, but I don't have enough room. The cable's a little bit thick for that hole. So that's where you're going to want to put it. After cutting it out with the X-Acto knife a little bit, finally got it over it, and I'll be able to slide this through the firewall and then put this plug back in, and then we'll just RTV it once we get it the right length. Now we got it pulled through the firewall. We're just going to plug it back up with that grommet and then we're gonna run it back up under here and then try to get it to come out the top, up top in the corner. So we're gonna run it from the bottom and then we're gonna bring it right up to the top right there in that corner. The easiest way to get that cable from the bottom to up top is to run a fishing line, wire, whatever. And I'm gonna run it through the top over here and then I'm gonna grab it from the bottom and I'm gonna tie it and I'm gonna gently force and pull it up you know if you have two people it's a little easier but if you're doing it by yourself it can be a little difficult so we're going to take this and we're just going to run it down as close as we can to the wire and believe me it's it's not that easy we got it tied on down here to the cable and now i'm going to try to work it as easy as i can There we go. We got our wire up there. That's the easiest possible way I can think of. I mean, if you're not doing it that way, then you're pretty much just struggling because gravity, the wire keeps dropping back down. 
So try it that way. Now for wiring up this unit, it's fairly simple. Um, on the actual gauge itself, right here, the white wire coming off of it is going to be your headlight power. So when you turn your headlights on, you're going to get yourself a test light, which is right here. And I went ahead and ran this wire right here to the actual cruise control, not inside it, but off of it right before it goes in. And I ran this wire right here to the red, red black. So it's red with a black stripe. So if you have a Honda, look for the red with one black stripe down it and that's your headlight power. So just tap into that one. All you do is when you pop off this side cover, it's just one screw and then you pop it out. There's like four, three rivets. Then you stick your fingers back through here and you push forward and it pops this piece out. So do that. So right now we have no power. And then when I turn the key, or not turn the key, but just click the headlight one time. You can see we got power. So that's our 12 volts on standby. Pretty much that's the wire you're most concerned about is the white wire. And then for the constant power, we obviously have to have a constant power wire. That's going to be this red wire right here. Now the constant power, that is running off of, on this uh, cruise console control switch it's running off the black with yellow stripe so black and yellow stripe is your constant power so go ahead and remember that and I ran these blue wires I twisted them and soldered them and then bolted the bolt in and all these blue wires are my ground now they're a little long and they everybody's probably thinking they look a little sloppy the reason why I leave them long is because if you ever have to pull your gauge out and change a bulb or a connector come loose or just you never know uh, I have enough play to pull it out a couple of inches out of the pod or the bezel so that's why I do that now this yellow wire right here you're probably wondering what the heck that is this is your data log this one actually plugs into your ECU and I'm gonna discuss that later um, I gotta find out which pin on my ECU that this is and I'm gonna run a wire from the passenger side all the way under the dash to this yellow wire and my ECU, I have a Honda at a S300, it'll be able to data log uh, the wideband. Here's the final step, is to put the uh, sensor in. And I'm just going to put a little bit of anti-seize around the threads right here. What you're going to want to do before you put it in, is you're going to want to twist the sensor the opposite way. So if I'm going to tighten it, I need to twist it a bunch of times backwards and then stick it in there and let it twist forward because if you don't you're gonna twist the wire it's not gonna kinda neutral out alright so here's the final product it's right in the bung right here and I got it zip tied up to the frame as for the main wire just follow this harness right here on the side by the cam gears and it runs down right down through here and then in the firewall right here in the back so I gotta put that plug in and uh, put some RTV and then that's pretty much it. Here's what the gauges look all finished up. <clears throat> I got everything buttoned up. You can see it's all smooth here and all the wires are nicely concealed. They come down through here. Clean up a little bit of grease marks but... And here's what they look like. It's not too bad. Uh, this gauge had a little bit of problem staying. It kind of was wiggly so I wrapped a couple passes of electrical tape real tight around the gauge and then shoved it in there keeps it really stiff so if you have that problem good old electrical tape will take care of that for you and then under here I'm gonna button this wire up I'm gonna zip tie it up in here real neat this is the uh, data cable the data wire that goes from your yellow wire on the uh, wideband all the way I'm gonna put it up you know a little higher and make it look good and then if you come over here Here's the uh, harness, and I found the pinout, which I mentioned earlier, and I put a use of 3M connector. Cut it, cut it off the main that's going to the ECU, cut it right here, and then hooked it right into the plug that goes into the ECU. All right, so we got everything hooked up. We're gonna start it for the first time and see what we get. 